Hello guys. So in this video, I'm going to go through concepts of this pretty interesting indicator. Uh, I mean, it's not new, okay, but the whole idea was to code it and to give it a few interesting features that I haven't seen anywhere. First of all, this indicator has actually been creating a lot of trouble, okay? Because to understand this concept, you have to understand that it constantly updates, okay? So let's um, go ahead and talk about theory. Now, in order to construct this indicator, right, we have to set something called um, min deviation in ticks. That's actually the only parameter, okay? So this is basically, I'm giving you the framework and the code, and I mean, there's so much research you can do with this. It's quite interesting, okay? And um, I'll explain first how it works, okay? And then how I built it, and then if you want to go for it, you can actually get the code and review the code. Okay, so basically what we're trying to do is we have a deviation value in TIG and we want to say, okay, so if we are right here, okay, and the market moves up, okay, <clears throat> once the market has moved up enough, okay, that's the deviation value, that's it, we want to have like a leg, a leg, okay? Now, first of all, first question you get is, how do you form the first leg? But I'll get get back to that, okay? So basically, let's imagine there's already some sort of swing going on, right? And let's say we're standing right here, okay? So first thing that we want to say, like from here, if the market starts falling, okay? Once the market has traveled down enough, okay? More than the deviation value set, we actually plot a leg, a dashed leg like that, okay? You can see it right here. This dashed leg is formed, okay? Now, this dashed leg, now if the market continues falling, okay, and making lower lows, okay, so not pivots, not like patterns or anything, just lower lows, the leg keeps on extending, okay? Now, if the market goes up from the lower low and goes up enough, enough meaning higher, uh, bigger than the deviation value, you said, that's it, this leg gets fixed up and this leg goes dashed okay because this can still extend okay and this is now here forever okay now so basically how do you build this indicator so first question is how do we like even build the first leg okay so the first leg right here is the first bar on the screen okay so where do we start so basically we actually take this open okay and we see where the market goes so if the market goes up so if the market goes up and the market goes up enough, we actually create, um, once it has made enough, okay, we make first uh, sort of peak, okay, we call it peak, okay. Now, after this, I mean, the same can, can happen to, to the other side, okay. So do we, we also create a peak once the market has traveled this distance, okay. So now we actually have two points. And once this peak has occurred, we actually rewrite this open to either be the high or the low, okay depending on which way we went down. And from, from this point on, okay, we just start and use the usual, well, not the usual, the algorithm uh, that I'll review in the code because that's just a, a bit more, kind of makes more sense to review it in code than in theory, okay? Because after this, basically, if the market continues up, we just rewrite this, you know, higher high in the array, okay? And then if the market switches direction, okay, and falls enough, then basically this becomes fixed up, okay, and this becomes the leg that can keep on extending. Okay, guys, so overall, this indicator, uh, another takeaway, and you can, this is actually what you can see is happening here. So, as you see, um, the deviation, minimum deviation is five, okay? Now, that's pretty small, so what you can actually see is basically when this bar closed, so I mean, we're this this is a historical execution, so I'm going to speak in terms of closed bars, okay? It actually works live, okay? I'll show you that in a second. But basically what you can see, this was already enough for this to get plotted. So if you were to execute this live, this would have been actually, it would have been going like this, then it would have gone like this, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Okay, and that's why you can actually see this value. Okay, this is a very rare case because most zigzags they don't show you like a historical value. Here you can actually see where the, the, the zag was whilst the history execution was there. Okay, and you can actually build something, some strategy logic upon it. Okay, um, now if I go ahead and so 
let me set it to a, a bigger value. I'm going to set it to like, I don't know, 15 or something. Sorry. Yeah, 15 ticks. It's not, not big enough. Okay, I'll put it to like 30 or something. I just want to show you, okay, here's a good example probably. Let's zoom in. So you can see when this lower low has been formed, okay, it wasn't until this bar here that the 30 ticks was made. Okay, so if I go ahead and take a ruler, yeah. okay, so that's 52 ticks. Okay, so here was still 28. I mean, it started from here, okay, but we're in the historical real, so there we go, okay? And that's why the values here come up only on this bar, because that's what was happening during your historical execution, okay? This came up only when this bar, you know, well, it actually started coming up here and it was growing, 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 and then it got fixed up and it got moved here. Then again, it stayed here dashed okay i'll show you in a second and then it got moved here dashed moved here dashed then when this when this high here well i mean when it made 30 ticks here that's when this dash turned solid and this dash you know kept on standing like that okay most zigzag indicators they don't show you this you know kind of intra bar intra zigzag intra swaying what was happening okay so let me Ahead and there we go. So let's have a let's have a replay. Okay. So here we go. You see, uh, moves and it's still dashed. It's still dashed because the market has not yet moved down. And you see, oh, okay, I didn't really catch that. You see how this bar here it actually went down, so it did not jump to this bar. It stayed on the higher high. See? And you get the values. So there you go. Okay? You see, it does not move here because this has not yet traveled down enough. It hasn't traveled down 30 ticks yet. And it's going to stay until it does so. Okay, so now it made 30 ticks and you get this line dashed. And this still stays solid. Okay? So that's the theory behind it. So um, welcome to review the code inside the product area. Thank you very much. <laughs>